Yeah, well, yeah, some of it is, uh, you know, don't, don't confuse activity with accomplishment. Yeah, that's good. That's Most, good, too. You know, a lot of people are very, very active, and then they get, they get nothing done, and then making sure people focus on the critical few, not the trivial many. Uh, things that will actually yeah. move the needle. Our vow and our philosophy. philosophy. Sales wolves hustle hard, it's our policy. We create economies, for crushing anomalies. Came in this world to dominate with no apologies. Gotta, gotta get it till the day that we cease to breathe. Sales wolves got the tools that you know you need. Real, real lessons, confessions of what it really means. To go from nothing to something and everything between. I am Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Let's get straight Ooh, to it. Right into it's one it. one of my favorite subjects. And it is one that we hold dear and regard fiercely. Yeah, so we're that not going to spend a lot of time on it. I can tell you that. Well, we will run right through this. This is episode 21 of the Sales Wolves podcast. For those of you that are just starting to uh, watch our podcast for the very first time, we'll briefly explain kind of who we are, what we do, uh, mainly who we are as a podcast and what we do, which we're here for two reasons, which is to provide uh, appreciation and support uh, for salespeople and really anyone in general, because at the end of the day, we're all salespeople. We're, we're all selling salespeople. one thing or another, whether that's ourselves or an actual product or service. Um, When's the last time you sold yourself? Every day. And how much did that go for? <laughs> Not as much as I thought it should have. <laughs> uh, uh, awkward. <laughs> they weren't catching what I was throwing, but that's all right. Live to fight another day. Live to fight another day. So the second reason why we do this podcast is to actually provide tactical training, tactical things that you can put into use and will actually increase your production, increase your efficiency, uh, and hopefully help you, help you become a, a better salesperson. And, and, and like we said, we believe that every single person are salespeople. So if you're a doctor, we want you to be a better doctor. You've got to interact with people mm -hmm. and you've got to learn to use your time wisely. And you want to be the most successful doctor, most successful lawyer, most successful engineer, most successful salesperson, most successful mom, dad, brother, sister, son, daughter. And these things will help anybody. And a lot, of what, and a lot of what we do, and the reason why it is universal and it is for everybody, is because before you spend any time, which is our subject today, before you spend any time right. focusing on the, the, the tactical, like overcoming these types of ejection, objections, mm -hmm. and these type of, you know, the assumptive clothes, and this type of clothes, and this and that, before you get to any of that, you really have to master the the beginning stage of just the pillars of hard work and passion and Personal that's really and that's a lot of the stuff that we talk about which is universal to anybody whether you're you're literally in sales or figuratively uh, throughout your day yep. uh, but let's jump right into today's topic so you can't save it plant it or grow it you can never create more of it once you spend it it's gone you're never promised more of it tomorrow none of us are promised tomorrow and that's time. Uh, so it is your most valuable asset. And that's what we're going to talk about today uh, is time, specifically time management. Um, I don't know. I can never remember the source of my quotes. I will murder you if you do not <laughs> say me. <laughs> God! <laughs> so Did you was, see the look on his face? He was trying to think of somebody to give credit to. I am... Was, I'm just going to drink my monster. I was literally thinking about doing a, uh, a Facebook post the other day and, and say... Um, Thank you, Anonymous, for all the unbelievable quotes for content that you have provided me over the year. Is Whenever I meet you, I'm going to shake your hand and tell oh you thank God. you. <laughs> this dude, Anonymous, has provided me with incredible content. This, this guy's awesome. <laughs> Anonymous. Uh, oh. So guard your time fiercely. Be generous with it but be intentional about it. And that's really a lot of the stuff that we're gonna go through here uh, real quickly uh, is, is talking about being able to guard your time, but still being able to be generous with exactly. it and use it 
in the right places and, and in the right ways. So there's an article that I found here that I wanted to go through real quick and we'll kind of riff off that. Um, it's three tips to using your time wisely. Uh, the first is run the day or it will run you. Can yeah. you start with that one? Absolutely, man. The key to time management is staying in charge. So you have to control your calendar. Your calendar will master you. Master your calendar, it'll master you. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing about you know what you just said, run the day or it'll run you. Yeah. If you do not take control control will be taken from you automatically. It is not, there is no glide through. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. the glide through is someone else will control you. Yeah. Or it can't be time. passive. That's it's right. It's got to be an active approach. No, there's no pass passivity. Is mm -hmm. that the right word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and so with that, um, we've all had those days where we have the best of intentions. Uh, we have a goal, you know, goal set out. We've got a plan of our day and we start out and it's all going well, we're mm -hmm. working on a project, and then this little distraction here, this little interruption here, and the next thing you know, you turn around and Day's you've gone. completely lost it. Yeah, Day's gone. Completely lost yep. it. And so that's, that's, that's the key, is, is staying in charge. And what that typically looks like is just taking a step back every now and then. Taking a step back and saying, okay, what, what am I doing right now? Literally, like, what am I doing right now? Yep. And how does that relate to what I'm supposed to accomplish today? And taking those tiny little 15 second pauses mm -hmm. to actually figure out yeah, that's that's basically is the way you create self-awareness it is hear, being aware of your around surroundings it's so like funny that. that you say that you know i was just having a meeting with tom shea mm -hmm. again that we did the podcast with yeah. incredible author of unbreakable get the book it's awesome um and we were talking about how you start your day hmm. and he said you need to take a step back and he was talking about meditation 10 hmm. minutes and he said it's nothing Nothing crazy or far out there. He was like, but wake up all your senses. Wake up your eyes. He said, what do you wake your eyes up for? And 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 he said, to see your prey. Huh. So you wait, so you know, you wake that up. What do you wake up your your hearing for, right? Huh. Just to hear the enemy. Right? <laughs> he said, What do you wake up your and your taste? And he went through all of them, taste, your touch, your your you, you know, yeah. all of that. And, uh, and your smell and, 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 and everything. He went through those things and he said, once those are woken up, he said, there's a sixth sense. And he said, once those are woken up and you've, you've meditated and you've taken a step back from everything, he said, then go through your goals. Hmm. And he said, it'd only take 10 minutes to wake everything up, to meditate. He said, then go through your goals, which is what you're talking These about. Are like daily goals so, or like your long-term goals? All, all of them, yeah. Gotcha. So you have your daily goals, you have your long-term goals, mm -hmm. but it puts those fresh in there yeah. and it wakes everything up. And he said, you'll be amazed at how many you go, oh, I've got a, over here, this will, and, and it's like an X factor. Yeah, 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 it propels everything <laughs> forward. So, but it's the same thing you're talking about. Take a step back yeah. and do it throughout the day too. Like you can take it, I do that sometimes. I'll be driving in the car. I do it while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. So I take a deep breath and just, and I think about these things or I'll think about the breath to start with and just take a step back and hmm. pause for a few minutes and then hmm. you and then you re reattack that's interesting so, so last week uh, we got to um, we got to go see a couple of speakers um, speak down in Atlanta and one of them was Sarah Blakely who was mm -hmm. the founder of Spanx and she was incredible she was one of the best speakers uh, by far I've heard she's awesome she really is I mean she's a mom of four like eight seven five and four or something crazy like that um, so she's got a lot going on at home but she's running this empire yeah. um, I mean just insane um, but one of the things that she said in relation to that is trying to figure out where she does get her best thinking done and what she realizes what she realized was that it was her best thinking was done while driving like you just said the problem was her commute was like five minutes and so what she literally does is she has her morning commute every morning. Well, she'll do a different ride each day or, or has kind of these routes that she'll go on. Well, she'll literally spend an hour in the car. I do that. Being just a commuter. I do that. But where she doesn't have to, like she could literally go right there, but she just drives around. She sits in traffic. And I do she's that. like, but I'm completely okay with it. I've never heard her say that because mm -hmm. I didn't get to go with you guys yeah. this week. But I do that. I go that's get awesome. in the car and I'll drive and that's what I'm, that's, mm -hmm. that's my thinking time. Yeah. My dad all through college and all through all through my college and all through my high school he worked um it was like 50 55 minutes uh from the house yeah um and people would always look at that and be like god that's, that's terrible but for him it was being able to prepare on the way and then be able to um decompress decompress on the way back and that's where he got the majority i mean he literally had like 
he had one of those Personal workstation. Growth, yeah. he had one of those workstations. I had one of those when I first and started. He would literally like have a lap. Like he's like driving with his leg. He would have like a laptop out, like doing emails. Dude, I don't even know if they sell those anymore. Like I had one that yeah. sat there that in the open desk. it up. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It had a seatbelt on, and yeah. you could pull the thing around and like have exactly. your laptop. Yeah. yeah, that's not safe. Yeah, <laughs> those are probably like Tesla made things <laughs> yeah. now. Where it's oh my gosh. Bit. A little bit more safe but there's an important phrase here where you said some will master and some will serve yeah your time which is pretty interesting so how do you stay in charge a couple of ways you can do that is number one by writing or having a written set of goals so obviously you should have goals but having them on you like on your person mm -hmm. like mine are on my phone um, but whether you have that written down on paper whether you have it on your phone mm -hmm. where you have it somewhere where you can look at it throughout the day and, and basically know where you're at uh, the next thing is prioritizing those goals based on what's most important, least important. A great this, book to go along with that is called Eat That Frog. Have you ever read mm, that? I have not. No, that we is talked a about that great the other day. book. It's called Eat That Frog. Is that is that the one where it says like the most important things do them first? Oh yeah, the ones that you want to get out of the way. The or, ones you can't stand that yeah. are the biggest. Just yeah. Um, and so what this article actually went into was talking about separating your daily tasks into majors and minors. So mm -hmm. major tasks, minor tasks. It even looked at major is today a major day or a minor day and gotcha. you can adjust your time accordingly are we having a major conversation or minor conversation it's you can just adjust, <laughs> adjust accordingly i gotta actually go <laughs> it's minor and this is a major day so i'm out of here but basically the majority of people struggle and this is huge the majority of people struggle in this area and here's why they major in minor things yep. That's one of the smartest things I've ever heard. They major in minor things and they spend not enough time on the things that are actually important. Yep. They spend all their time on the things that, that really don't matter. Irrelevant. You know what I think a, a lot of times that is for me personally, because I struggle with this from time to time, is the minor... <laughs> now i got to go to the bathroom. Thank you. Uh, but the minor things, the small things... Um, you can't this focus is while literally, that's This is literally like a Monster Energy commercial. <laughs> it just made me want to take a sip. <laughs> Thanks, Monster. Oh, yeah. Goodness gracious. <laughs> just so y'all know, they don't send us any money. Yeah, they just send in us fact, to the hospital. Every, every in fact, months. I'm probably going to have to have a new kidney or <laughs> liver because of Monster. But it's um, sometimes I find myself spending too much time on minor tasks because those minor tasks are easy to accomplish and easy to like, okay, done, check, done, oh, check, I get to done, check, check, this check off. done, check. Right. And you feel at the end of the day like you've done all these things, but you left out the major stuff that actually <laughs> matters. That actually matters. Yep. And so if you think about that, am I majoring in minor things? Um, that is a huge, huge area for improvement. Big time. Number two, man, is people just staying busy. Because busy doesn't mean that you're actually getting things mm -hmm. done. And that's what you're talking about. Like, I stayed busy all day. Oh, yeah. This is number two. I stayed busy all day. I checked off all these things. But what did I really accomplish? Mm -hmm. Right? Did so I says, really get it don't done? Make, don't mistake movement for achievement. Right. My dad used to always say something about, like, when he would talk about, like, yeah, like, working hard. And he would say something like, well, my washing machine works hard. But I can't remember the last part of that quote that he used to always say with it. What, have you heard that before? He would say a washing machine works hard, but it's something like, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Or like, but it doesn't something. But it doesn't it actually doesn't. clean your underwear? <laughs> Is that what? Like, a, like a washing machine works hard. I don't know. I don't know what the end of that quote was. I'll figure it out. I tried to Google it right before this. I couldn't find it. That's because Thanks, he, Dad. that's his quote. <laughs> he probably made that up when he looked at you. When I tried to Google it, all I found was like reviews on washing machines. Okay. <laughs> it was not helpful at all. Thank you, customer service. Why didn't you call him? Um, call him right now and see what it is. You got your phone? This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Busy being busy. Let's see, how hard am I going to have to work at making it look like I'm working hard today? That's a great question. That was in that article. You got him? Let's call him. How hard am I going to have to work at making it look like I'm working hard? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. This one, you know the guy that gets home, plops down on the couch and exclaims, I've been going and going all day. But the real question is, doing what? What exactly were you doing all day? Um, God, they're going, 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 but they're going in a figure eight. Like they're never actually going somewhere. So he didn't, he didn't answer. Call me back. Dang. Um, Should have left it up here. He might call you right oh, back. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I thought that was funny, a figure eight, if you actually think about how yeah, stupid yeah. that is. Yeah, how stupid. To just keep going, 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 mm-hmm. going, going. But, but we've all seen that. We've all seen the person that, like, every, every like one of those friends that you have, that every time you see them, they're just kind of like, oh, oh, man, I've been going all day long. What'd you get done? Like, what'd you do? I had this conference call. I had this conference call. This I had meeting. With these people. I had this lunch meeting. I had to drive over to this part of town to do this. And, like... So what'd you get a cop like? Did, ah, here he is. Oh, here he is. Good. <laughs> hey. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, I've got you on speakerphone, and we're actually um, recording a podcast right now. So you're on the podcast. All right, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to think of a quote they used they used to always say, and it was in regards to uh, working hard versus like working smart and getting things accomplished. And you used to say something like a, even a a washing machine works hard, but there was a second part to it. It's like, but yeah. Well, yeah, some of it is uh, you know, don't don't confuse activity with accomplishment. Yeah, that's good. That's Most, good too. You know, a lot of people are very very active, and then they get they get nothing done, and then making sure people focus on the critical few, not the trivial many. Uh, things that will actually yeah. move the needle, uh, especially on the sales side, where you have people don't value their time as far as windshield time, things like that. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, you know, what gets measured gets accomplished. You know, but you gotta make sure you're measuring the right, you know, things that are actually gonna impact your business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you do you remember that specifically about the washing machine? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of it. I even tried to Google it, and it was like nothing was coming up, but like, yeah. like Whirlpool reviews. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, haven't written, I haven't written down. Our, our it was it was it was something it. like I remember something like where I would say something. You said, well, even the washing machine works hard, but it doesn't get you I don't yeah, know what doesn't get, well, get you anywhere yeah the that's what I thought it was around, around. So it's a fuck door thinking goes round and round Sorry, and round, yeah. and round that makes sense ah yeah. uh, gotcha <laughs> so it's kind of like a treadmill works hard but it doesn't go anywhere yeah got it yeah okay. kind of like the you know, like the you know the gerbil or whatever on the little you know, <laughs> the hamster wheel hamster wheel just going around and around the hamster wheel just going around and around it's like you know alright alright well we appreciate it <laughs> alright all right, I'll talk to you later. All right, love you. Bye. That's funny. That's awesome. Hey, did you hear what now he said? You know, now you know where all these quotes and wisdom yeah. come from. He just <laughs> spit out like he spit out forty of them. I wrote these down. You measure accomplishments. Only accomplishments can be measured, mm-hmm. right? And then this is my favorite thing he just that said. Was big. The critical few. You concentrate on the critical few instead of the trivial many. Man, that's, that's pretty, good. That's pretty good. I'm going to have to Google that. We, and see if let's have him on as a that. guest. Do you want to have him on yeah. as a guest? Absolutely. That would be freaking awesome, man. Absolutely. What's your daddy's name? Mark. Mark Harris. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. That was good. Good time. Very cool. Yeah, so, good. I'm glad he called back. So we just went through pretty much everything in number two. Yep. Um, did you talk about auditing your day? I mean, that's 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 the important thing is just audit, auditing your day yeah, and figuring yeah. out every hour of the day like where are you spending your time what are you actually doing yep. and realizing that 99 percent of things don't matter yep. and and figuring out when you're when you're spending time on those things and then just just get cut them out, out. Uh, so the last is learn to say no wait, wait wait i like what you wrote here and it was probably in the article that's why i like it <laughs> it wasn't what you wrote it's an original yeah you have enough you have enough time to achieve anything you want the reality is you're probably wasting 70 to 90 percent of it mm-hmm. yeah at least at least so all right yeah and tyler was going into the third the third point is learn to say no it's so easy it's so easy nowadays uh to get yourself over obligated Mm -hmm. every time something comes up especially when you're in sales um every networking event every you know social event where you think you might be able to meet someone that could turn into a relationship that could ultimately turn into a sale every sales conference every leadership conference every conference call every webinar every this this that and just saying yes 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 and all of a sudden you're so overcommitted to where you've literally you've booked out your days but again it's on stuff that doesn't matter does not matter and so the big thing is don't let your mouth overload your back so i loved loved that saying that they said don't let your mouth overload your back being too eager to please can be dangerous don't your don't let your mouth write a check your ass can't cash. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was in a movie. I think I heard that yeah. when I was younger. Black Something. and white film, probably. Um, Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was in subtitles before they spoke in the movies. <laughs> Do they call them talkies when they? When they I, I, I. 
He's going to smash you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so remember, if if you believe in work-life balance, which again we talk about the fact that we yeah. we don't, but if you do believe in it, everything that you commit to, everything that you say yes to, is going to take away from something, from something else, yeah. and those something else are income-producing activities or family time. Yep. It's going to take away from one of them, and you just so every time you 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 say yes and you commit to these obligations, you're number one. You're either going to have far too much wasted time actually following through right. with those obligations or you're going to have just worthless, worthless wasted time by backing out of those things that you committed to. And it's going yeah. to cause and credibility it'll, issues. It'll actually ruin relationships. Exactly. So, there's a good verse in the Bible. I don't even know if it's in the Bible. Let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. Is that in the Bible? Somewhere? I don't know. It I'm is, sure. man. Probably. You're like a pastor or something. You don't even know that shit. <laughs> pastor of disaster. <laughs> <laughs> But, but be I eager know. to please yourself <laughs> and your family. Yeah. Don't be so eager to please everybody else yep. because everybody else is not providing for your family. That's right. They're not the ones. You, you can't deposit uh, their opinions. That's for sure. Are you spending your time or investing it? At this stage of my life, if it doesn't make me happy, make me better, or make me money, I don't have time for it. And so a funny story with that. So my dad, who you just heard on the phone, I can remember... Um, when I started doing well in business and I started not doing things that normal like men take care of around the house and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, like you know, mowing the grass mm -hmm. and landscaping and washing cars and things like that. You know I still wash my own car and mow my own grass. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so like literally that thought just popped in my head and it was just like hilarious, even picturing it. Just like sitting on the <laughs> Just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. But the reality, the reality is, you, you've got to audit your time. You've got to. Here's what it really is. You've got to figure out how much your time is worth. True. And so, how much is your time? If if you're if you're running on all eight, twelve cylinders, how much is that time worth? Right. Is it worth a hundred dollars an hour? Is it worth fifty dollars an hour? And then take every single situation, every single task that you have in front of you that is below that, and either eliminate it or delegate it. And a yeah. lot of it you can't eliminate. Like if you're, someone's gonna have to mow the grass. Someone's gonna mow the grass. Yeah. So those things that you can delegate. delegate. If you can pay somebody, you know, thirty bucks an hour, yep. and your time is worth fifty bucks an hour, that was a positive ROI. That's right. On that time, because you and I got to, to sit with my son while the grass was being mm -hmm. mowed. I got to sit with my son and read a book with him. And that's probably the biggest focus there is that don't delegate those tasks and then waste. use that time to just completely yeah. waste yeah. waste away. I mean, that's that's where a lot of people will. Well, well, they'll see that and they'll use that as an excuse to, oh, well, I need to, I can get all this stuff done from other people. But they're not using that time to, you know, push themselves forward. Sure. And they're just using that time to sit at a bar and sit and, around. And, and when people do that, they won't stay in that position long. That's true. That their their charisma or their talent got them where their character won't keep them. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. And it's not just. Yeah, you know, these meaningless like household tasks like laundry and cars washing and yeah. and lawn. It's it's important stuff too. Like it's stuff around the office. Like it's different things that you just have to figure out. Like is this is this task best for me to do or is it best for somebody else to do? Right. And figuring that out as a team, where right. each person based on their skills and abilities and um, and time, you know, what what's the best way to delegate that? I mean, that's a that's a huge huge focus when, from an organizational standpoint yeah, to make sure that the right people are doing the right things. They're in the right seats on the bus. Exactly. So that's awesome. Great. I like this one. Really yeah, good. This is good. That's what people people need to need to understand that time is your most valuable commodity. And it should absolutely terrify you to waste it. That's what I'm. That's what I'm because once to it's feel, gone, feel more and more of is like. I have this, so when I'm on the road, I'm just in like insanely just hyper focused on efficiency. It's like boom, 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 one thing to the next, one mm -hmm. thing to the next, and then it's a little bit less. And it's trying to it's trying to trick my mind into the same mentality of when I'm away and when I'm at home um, to be able to continue being just equally as efficient because it's just I get this like almost like a, this heaviness in my chest yeah. when I'm not being as productive as I know I can be. That's the monster. <laughs> It's like this starts with this tingling and this pain in my arm, and, it's, and then it's about six monsters <laughs> in in a day. I usually black out, and then it's just I need to get no, it checked out. But it, but it's really it's like this. It's like pent up productivity mm -hmm. is 
is not a good thing, uh, but being terrified of wasting time because knowing that without a doubt, you can't get it back. So if you look at a day and you're like, gosh, this happened and it, I wasted so much time today, you can never, ever, ever, ever get it back. And that even if it's like an hour of a day, that's an hour of a day that you will 100% wish you could have gotten it back when you have no more time. Um, and, that's and, and, and that's when regret comes in. Mm -hmm. That's when regret plays into it is when you've wasted the time you were allotted here. Because I don't know how much time you got. I don't know how much time I have. I don't know how much time Tyler mm -hmm. has. Probably less than <laughs> he thinks. But uh, <laughs> but he, with modern science, with modern, it can be at least 150 years. 150. Old. <laughs> but uh, but once you spend that time, it is gone, man. None of us are promised tomorrow, and. Let's pull everything you can out of every moment. That's about the only way I can say it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we choose to do these podcasts because we want to get that across to you. We want your life to be better because you heard us laughing and talking about stuff like this. And and you heard, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm wasting some time here. Or maybe maybe I'm not spending my time wisely with my family or with with my job. Or maybe I'm cheating work, cheating work mm -hmm. out of some time, you know? Yeah. And I'm, and I'm acting like I'm busy. We want you to hear this and go, man, I'm gonna fix that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fix that. Because the only person that can fix that is you. Yeah. Like it's not, we can't do that for you. We sit here and we talk about this and we're investing time of our lives into this right here because we want to affect you in a positive manner. But and, wrap it up. and just as much as everyone wants to talk about money as, as this goal and success and asset, if you really start grasping that time is the most valuable asset that you have. That the it most. that it means that money is nothing in comparison. At the at the very end, when you look back, the time is is what was most valuable. That I think it, it's a paradigm shift it is. Um, in your in your brain when you start looking at the potential regret and the the efficiency of that time. It's um, it'll if you if you use it, it can be the biggest catalyst for change and. And growth, um, probably of anything that we've ever talked about in the podcast. So, yeah. so guys, with that, um, what we would really love for you to do, if you are getting uh, value, any value from this podcast, uh, we would like for you to go to iTunes. iTunes is where we are um, are, are really changing our focus uh, to really push. And iTunes reviews are the absolute best way that you can show us that hey, we're actually doing something yeah. uh, that's helpful. Um, so leave a leave a uh, review. If you just search on iTunes Sales Rules Podcast, it'll pop up. And if you can leave us a review, that really helps with all the rankings. Um, would mean the world to us. That's really the only Absolutely. ROI that we would ever uh, hope to get. It's the only thing uh, we're asking for someone to say, "Hey, I watched this podcast and I got something out of it." That's and all we want. It. So yep. with that, I am Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Rules. Uh,